going back to dry Arabia. But you know what else is going to happen in a matter of seconds? It is going to be a French versus Delhi matchup here. On high view, we're jumping into game number two with Beastie Cutie having a 1-0 lead. Yes, I am looking forward to it, Litacore. Let us get into it. Let us begin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Oh, we got ourselves we got we got ourselves a little bit of a, a, a load in right there. That's that's how quick we are and how keen we are to get into this game. There's no time even to let our observers set up this game. We are just diving straight into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two in your Golden League Grand Finals. Spawning in over on that south side of the map, playing in the color blue. It is Marine Lord on the French. And spawning it on the left side of the map, it is going to be Beastie Cutie commanding the Mongols. Or Mongols? What am I talking about? It's the Delhi Sultanate in red. Beastie would love to have the Mongols over here. It's his favorite civilization. But instead, he has to use the civilization that he only has one victory with in the entire tournament. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one to look at because we didn't see a lot of Delhi games from Beastie though. And wait a minute, look at that. Is that survival techniques? It is, but I think it's queued up after wheelbarrow. But uh, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Take okay, a look okay, at the, okay, okay. this. Okay, it's, it's queued up after that. It's a little weird on the overlay, right? Because all you see on the left side yes. is that upgrade queued up. I got scared for a moment that he's going for something crazy over here. Well, I, I suspect he will be. Because have a look at this. This is probably the best high view spawn I have ever seen. Look at Beastie's base. It is very simple. He has got four giant forests on each corner of his base. It makes it incredibly easy for him to wall this in. It is going to be super easy for him to do that. He's got one, two, three, and then, of course, the fourth and final forest that is just going to make a beautiful little square, keep him nice and safe against those French night raids. This is already insane stuff for Beastie. Indeed, it's going to make it very easy to get himself water, though. Truth being told, if you would put Beastie to an empty blank map that has absolutely nothing on it, he would still find a way to wall himself in. So it's just going to save up on the costs, but indeed, it's going to be very easy for Beastie to wall himself in. Although Marine Lord, he doesn't really need to complain either. His left side is very well defendable. And the thing I like about this one is the intermediate game for Marine Lord. So if you look at those two for uh, forests towards the middle of the map for Marine Lord, if he rolls to the edge of the map from those, that's going to set him up pretty well in that intermediate time frame of the game. And I just want to clarify something, because this is something I found out the hard way, that when it comes to uh, providing seeds to players, or at least this is my understanding for it, that you don't actually get to pick which player spawns on which side. You just you just get, you, you get the seed, and then that's it. You can't actually choose, okay, like player one gets in this spot, player two gets in that spot. It is just like, that's the seed and you know where the resources spawn, but you don't actually know where the players spawn and who gets what spot. And that can be quite frustrating because I remember I was I had a specific seed and I was trying to get the bottom spawn and the game was just giving me top <laughs> spawns and it took about seven rolls before I got the bottom spawn. I'm like, oh my God, okay, finally I got that bottom spawn. But uh, yeah, it can be something to note uh, just here in this case, uh, because I did see there were some people saying that the, the map picker was a paid actor, uh, but <laughs> that is not the case. I mean, he, he is paid, but he's not acting. Let's just put it that way. School of Cavalry now coming in here for Marine Lord. Very standard French opening from him. Beastie also going for a rather standard opening with the Delhi. He goes for the berries at the beginning, which is super common. In fact, he loves to do that both with the Abbasids and the Delhi, simply because in his perspective, those berries are considered exposed resources. So you don't even want to think about using your sheep in Dark Age because you have a safe berry patch. You want to save those sheep for that um, more exposed time frame where the knights are coming in and pushing your berries. Some players, especially with the Abbasids, like to open with the sheep rather than the berries. Beast is the type of player that essentially always opens with the berries because he wants to take them as long as they are not exposed. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, well, one of the things I want to do now is just take a look over at the base of, of Beastie and see how things are progressing for him. Obviously, he has that landmark coming up, but take a look at that sheep count, Litacore. How are you feeling about that? That's a lot of backup food, if I may say so. Uh, pretty respectable 17 out there. The more concerning thing for Marine Lord is not that Beastie has that many sheep. It's going to be the factor that Marine Lord doesn't have a ton of sheep to work with. So he's going to be very strained on food. And when you're going for a knight plus archer combination, that's relatively food heavy. Plus, of course, you do have the faster working town centers. So you deplete food a little faster as well. You're going to start running out of food rather fast. 
Yeah, his villagers are already idle. Look underneath the town center, and they march out to the single lone sheep that was brought in by that scout. If there has ever been a time to say feels bad, man, it is right now. As we see it, the second scout bringing in a single sheep as well. Oof. <laughs> the, the, this is oh, me geez. trying to find sheep in red leather games. I can tell you this one. This is yes. like the exact same luck I have with sheep is what Marine Lord has right now. Just one sheep trailing each scout. That's going to cause a lot of problems for him because Beastie's out here for blood. And you see Beastie's already adding a spearman preemptively to deal with the knights that are about to come. But there's not even a single knight queued up because Marine Lord, he simply can't afford it. There actually is a knight crossing the map though already, if the overlay is correct. Yeah, there should be one out there. There it is making its way on, picking up the wolf as it goes on as well, bringing up a little brother. But fortunately, that little brother has stopped just shy of the stealth forest. And now attention is drawn towards that northern side. We can see Marine Lord's already got scouts in position, looking to eye out some of those villagers. Indeed, and this is where Marine Lord has to make something happen. He loves to play from that position where he builds up a small lead and then gradually expands it over time. But he needs to build that small lead up and the knights provide a great tool for that. He actually does not use the charge over here, which means that two sword sings is just going to be insufficient to deal with those villagers. I actually wonder if Beastie has already gotten textiles or it's yet to be researched. Villager actually went down on the gold mine for Marine Lord. Look at that. That is a terrible, terrible outcome for him. And now I think he's realized it as he pulls back that second villager. And the consequence of not addressing those scouts on the south side means that you lose this villager. And it's a, it's a terrible loss for him. This is just, it, it's one of those unforced errors that you just shouldn't be making. Yeah, so many things going bad over here for Marine Lord. And against a player like Beastie, you can't afford to give him freebies like that. You can't afford to lose a villager to scouts like that. It's already a terrible scenario that you are out of sheep, essentially. Losing villagers like that is terrible. Also getting a couple of free hits on that knight with the spearman is Beastie. Marine Lord needs to clean up his game over here really fast because he could be in trouble very soon if these uh, negative tendencies continue. And now that knight going to be heading in towards the very villagers. Knight finally going to be chasing away these scouts as well as they separate and jump over on a different side. The Marine Lord out on berries himself already. Oh, geez. It's a, it's a tough opening for him. He's going to try and, and do things the right way. And now it starts to research professional scouts, which is definitely a smart move for him, considering the lack of food uh, that he has managed to secure in the early game. But uh, now we start to see those walls coming up. This was something I talked about a bit earlier. You've obviously got Beastie with the Dream Spawn, one of the best spawns that you could ever have in a game right now. Four giant forests around each corner of your base. And this is the stuff dreams are made of. Exactly, and that's going to make it very difficult for Marine Lord to get any kind of eco damage done. And when the Delhi can just focus the fight to like one or two places, they dominate in those because they're just going to focus on that one sacred site and they're going to take it with their overwhelming numbers. The French in this scenario, they want to use those expensive knights that they only have a few of to raid and keep the Delhi player at check, force the Delhi player to pursue those with some horsemen and spearmen, or just force them to keep some forces back at home. And you gotta love how Beast is using his spearmen to wall this up. Means that even if there's a knight coming, there wouldn't be any villager picked off on those walls being made. And of course, there isn't gonna be any villager time that's wasted there. Very efficient there. And with him finishing up with Sanctity very soon, we're going to see him moving towards those sacred sites. So far, textbook Delhi gameplay by Beastie. And Marine Lord, he needs to be careful because one thing we haven't mentioned is that while Beastie only has won one game in Golden League with the Delhi, that was against the French. It was against Lucifron back in round two of the bracket stage. So he's very familiar with the matchup. Um, and the, obviously the opening has been very good for him. He found a lot of sheep. He's denied a lot of space. And of course, he's got a very easy base to wall up. But now we begin to see knights moving out across the map, looking to try and prevent any scholars from coming out onto those sacred sites. But in in or almost preemptive that, preempting that move, rather, uh, we do see that uh, the beastie's bringing out some... Uh, some spearmen with him as well. But now heading out into the middle of the map, Marine Lord anticipates the scholars are going to be jumping on those sacred sites and he turns his attention towards them. Up towards the north, that, that knight still chills out. Now we actually see that Beastie's actually going to fall back from that central sacred site. You can see the scholar has now jumped off the sacred site and now jumping back on. He Just might sort of, be I don't know whether he's... Marine Lord here. Yeah, I think that's it. It's got to be a bait, right? It's a great bait, mate. Oh, what an idea by Beast. This is a super clever thing that he's doing. He's baiting Marine Lord to the central sacred site, telling him, hey, I'm coming here. You should send your army that way. Because what he's doing in the meantime is walling off the other sacred sites. And 
By doing this, he essentially ensures that the archers are in the middle of the playing field, which means that the spearmen that are doing the voling on the other sacred sites aren't gonna get picked off. This is a five head move by Beastie, and once again, super clever use of the daily features. Yeah, he's looking very, very strong in this early stage of the game, and now that central sacred site does get captured. And with that, the onus or the burden is now placed on Marine Lord. He's going to have to deny that sacred site. It is not going to be as easy as just standing on it and stopping it from being captured. No, he's going to have to stand there and he's going to contest it uncontestedly uh, for at least, what, 30 seconds, I think it takes. Indeed, and that is going to be a tremendous amount of gold income here for the Delhi because... If you're new to this game, one thing that you should know is that while the sacred sites are a victory condition as well, the more important aspect of this is that you're getting a ton of gold from it, especially if you're the Delhi. So for the Delhi, controlling those sacred sites is essential because that's their real economy power spike. So that's the reason why Beast is playing so heavily towards those sacred sites. Beastie now moving out to the sacred side just as that final tick almost comes through. He knows his timing absolutely perfectly. Beautiful melee composition he's got here as well. This is a classic composition that we do see coming out of a number of sieves. Delhi, China, they love to go for this composition because it means that they're going to be able to really get in there and jam their units on top of that French composition. And behind this one, he's walling up the sacred side, so it's going to be very difficult for Marine Lord to do any damage over there. And you see that the only thing that Marine Lord has an advantage of right now <laughs> is going to be just the villager numbers. Six villager lead here for Marine Lord. But aside from that, army numbers are favoring Beastie. He does have all three sacred sites, though the one on the right side is going to get decapped very soon. But that is still two guaranteed sacred sites for Beastie, yielding him a ton of gold income. And part of the reason why he's picking the Delhi on this map, I'm just now realizing, is that on this map, high view, it's very common that the sacred sites spawn in the corners and then the third one right in between them at like the middle of the map, like the metrical center of the map. So it's very predictable and it also guarantees you one sacred site in that far left corner. Yeah, that's a really good point. This is part of the reason why I personally don't like Delhi on this map because I find it very hard to... Basically, your enemy should be able to deny you that, that safe sacred site for them. Um, and that's now happened for Marine Lord. For unfortunately, uh, for Marine Lord, uh, Beastie was able to capture it, but as a result, it means that Marine Lord should be able to turn his entire attention towards that central sacred site. And with that, as long as he's got his army parked there, he should be A-OK. -okay. But obviously, Beastie's done a really good job in the early game to get that numbers edge, and it means that he's been able to come in here and secure up this sacred site. And let's keep in mind that Marine Lord is on a bit of a timer over here food-wise. Obviously, with professional scouts, he's going to have some carcasses to work with, but if Beastie is paying attention and making sure that his opponent can't take his carcasses or his hunt, then he can limit the amount of food that's available for Marine Lord, forcing him to make a farm transition sooner. And let's keep in mind that... Oh, bit of a lag oh. in between the players. But let's keep in mind that uh, the Delhi power spike is coming in the next couple of minutes. So Marine Lord simply can't afford to have his farm transition be ongoing in that time frame. Oh, you sneaky, sneaky scouts. I'm not sure if you saw that, but those scouts were just so close to being found out by those horsemen. Fortunately, they're going to be able to make their way out of it. Now we can see those knights moving in towards the base of his enemies, trying to find those villagers and take down them and, and cause a fair bit of economic damage. But it looks like they're going to be able to make it out alive. Age 3 now comes through with a whole bunch of upgrades. We've got veteran spearmen, veteran archers, and professional scouts coming through as well for Beastie. The loop around by Beastie is coming from behind with the horsemen. He's trying to jump on those archers. It looks like the scouts are getting away, but Beastie is looking to take a decisive engagement over here, and he may have as well trapped the army over here from Marine Lord. Now moves out to pursue the scouts, actually. Marine Lord diving deep into the base of Beastie. Beastie yet to get the first elephant out, though. Yeah, it's going to take some time before that elephant comes out, but we can see all the upgrades coming in queue for him now. There's a couple of units up here towards the north, and Marine Lord definitely would feel trapped right now in the base of Beastie because it's going to be very easy for him to wall that up. Uh, one thing to note is we actually have the compound of the Defender coming through for Beastie here as well, so not looking for those upgrades that you typically see coming out from the House of Learning. Nice little raid towards the base of Marine Lord here as well. Beastie trying to even up that village account, only managing to take out a scout or two, and those knights are also rounding the corner here in the base of Beastie. Yeah, Beastie at some point is going to have to take this fight over here. He's waiting for the right time, though, trying to get those Castle Age upgrades. And he might soon take this one. He's going to lose a couple of villagers here, but gets a couple of free hits on those knights. There is no way for Marine Lord to escape, though. Marine Lord, the best chance for him is to trade this army out and delay his opponent as long as possible.
Yeah, the problem is he doesn't actually have enough archers to one-shot those spearmen. You can see him trying his best to kite away from them, and he's only, unfortunately, able to take them down to just a slither of health. And you know what that means, because he's up against a Delhi player that they basically return to full health whenever they are free. So, unfortunately for him, not the best trades. Yeah, not the best trades over here. And normally we talk about the French being a civilization that loves to stay in feudal age. But that is when you do have two town centers, when you have a considerable villager lead, you do have a respectable villager lead over here for Marine Lord numbering 13. But no second town center and the Delhi player was on two sacred sites for a while. So you wouldn't call this an ideal scenario for a French by any means. Yeah, this is something that I often talk about as well. As a Walla Lol goes down right now in the center of the map, gonna deny off that scout from coming through. He tries to capture the sacred site and uh, and prevent it from from being neutralized by that scout. But one of the things I often talk about in this matchup is as the French, you've got only a couple of win conditions. Number one is if you go for a second town center and you manage to survive into the late game as a knight looks like it might go down and convert. Oh, it nope. was close, but. Not going to happen. <laughs> the other one is obviously a timing push that can come out from the French right when the Delhi hits age three. And that's what we saw for Marine Lord. Unfortunately, Marine Lord didn't have enough units and it meant that things just didn't go well for him. And now he's going to hit that age three himself. It looks like a guild hall going to be coming up for Marine Lord. Um, and uh, you, you can't help but feel for the guy right now. Yeah, he's going to get uh, some villagers over here on the northern side. But behind this one, Beastie is picking up all five relics from the map. He's bringing in five relics from all across the map. And once again, he's just playing for that intermediate late game scenario. He doesn't want to drag this out deep into Imperial with the Delhi. But he himself setting up with five relics is going to provide him a ton of gold. And guess what? Those Tower of War Elephants, they do cost a lot of gold. If he is walled back at home, it's going to be impossible for Marine Lord to use his mobility. And he can just start moving out with those Elephants. Plus, of course, once... Oh! The kiss oh. of death now comes through. The charge comes off. And unfortunately for Beastie, he's going to be losing a huge amount of villagers right there. A little bit of a, 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 a wig out. I'm not sure exactly what happened right there. But uh, unfortunately for, uh, for Beastie, he loses a lot of villagers. That's a ton of losses, though. And suddenly that villager gap is looking a lot more promising over here. Beastie struggling a little bit for food over here. You see, he's very heavily focused on those berries. And those knights are punishing him for it. No defensive towers on that berry patch. And you see, Marine Lord knows his job. He's probing that berry patch every once in a while, checking if there are any villagers. And guess what? I don't see a single sheep under that town center anymore for Beastie. He's gonna have to soon think about adding farms over here if he can't get those berries back for himself. He's got the first two elephants out on the battlefield though. So suddenly, Marine Lord may need to pull back those knights to deal with those elephants that are marching towards his base. And also Beastie, 990 stone in the bank. Keep in mind, with the compound of the defender, your castles only cost 600 stones. So Beastie can soon think about dropping two of those, likely very close to the base of Marine Lord. Yeah, this could be really, really impactful because for Marine Lord, remember, he doesn't have that big economy. Sure, he's up on the village account, but that's only very recent. So all those resources that have been gathered up for uh, Beastie out throughout this game, they've already been stacked up and banked up. So sure, he's got that economic advantage right now, but it's definitely only going to take some time before that actually comes through. So with this, the potential keep drop that comes in, there is the potential for Beastie to really come in and, and finish this game in the next four to five minutes. Yeah, that's exactly it. And if you look at the army for Marine Lord, it's very heavily focused on the knights. And Beastie does have 14 spearmen on the battlefield with limited archers from Marine Lord to deal with that. Looks like Marine Lord wants to go for a keep himself, but he might be running into a massive trap over here. Beastie, he might not spot this though. I don't think he has a scout to spot this one with. Oh, he's going to spot a disaster for Marine Lord. Yeah, things just are not going well right now for our French player. And the keep does get cancelled. The villagers have to head back towards the base. Scholars out in numbers as well. We can see that there's 12 scholars out on the field right now for Beastie. He is looking very happy, very healthy. I suspect that he, we've got uh, herbal medicine in already as well for him. Um, he should have that upgrade indeed. And there are the villagers. Beastie is working towards that first keep. He's dropping it at the middle of the playing field. And indeed, Herbal Medicine should be finished by now. He's got 13 Scholars on the battlefield. First Castle is a little more passive, but the second one is going to be super aggressive. And it's actually close to the gold of Marine Lord. Bit of a trench is being dug over here by Beastie once again, preventing the flanking. Great micro so far by our Delhi player. 
Yeah, this is something I love to see out of him. He always puts up these tiny little walls like this and, and just tries to prevent any sort of flanks that comes through. And now look at the keep that comes down in the back of the base for Marine Lord. Definitely not a, a keep that he's going to be happy to drop down. Obviously provides that buff up for the French player. So for anybody unfamiliar with the French bonus, because I know that there's a couple of pro players that don't really know how to use it. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got one in mind in particular, but uh, essentially the way that it works is if you put a, a uh, stable or an archery range next to that keep, it's going to reduce the cost of the units inside of it uh, by 25%, which is a huge amount. And you can buff it up to 30% with the unique upgrade of enlistment incentives in Imperial. So you can buff that even more. It looks like Marine Lord is taking a bit of a risk over here, looping around with knights. He's going to be rewarded for this one, though. That should be a lot of that villagers. Beautiful flank around, cutting off the retreat path. Beastie is going to lose 15 villagers over here on the stone. Oh, this is massive damage, and everything can go right in your game. But if that happens, oh, that's a feels bad moment right there. Beastie Cutie down to 33 villagers and Marine Lord all of a sudden starting to look a little bit better, a little bit happier, a little bit healthier when it comes to that village account because he is more than double his enemy right now. And I can already hear chat calling the good game. And now this push from Beast, it turns into an all-in. It has to turn into an all-in because he needs to understand he's so much behind in terms of villagers. The elephants and the spearmen are lagging behind. They're ignoring the villagers. So many villagers once again getting picked off over here. Oh, Beast is not noticing this because he's busy dealing with all the knights flooding into his eco and he's just bleeding from so many wounds here. He could be down to 20 villagers in a blink of an eye. Yeah, it seems like it might be death of by a thousand cuts, but the thousand cuts was just on the villagers that were gathering stone in your base. But now Beastie going to be jumping back towards that town center. Look at the villagers just going down. Beastie down below 30 villagers now. 26 villagers remaining for him. This is getting, starting to get really tough because even though Beastie loves to play these longer games, he realizes that things are not looking pretty right now. He knows how important it is to try and finish off this game. I suspect he's going to be even going for landmarks. All three landmarks are within one single screen for him. So it is possible if he wants to just go straight for it, he can definitely think about that. If he gets a keep up on top of those landmarks, it's going to be difficult for Marine Lord to challenge that. And it might mean that he needs to get trebuchets out, but look what he's got in queue. It is the Red Palace! No way, Marine Lord! Oh, he's got the brain the size of a walnut and the head the size of a watermelon. How does he do it? Oh man, the Red Palace, the perfect reaction over here. And you could see that Beastie wanted to go for that landmark snipe that you mentioned. He's aware that he has no chance of coming back into this game with 25 villagers. He essentially has to snipe those landmarks or it is story over for him in this game. And Marine Lord's reaction was immediate. He's dropping one of the best defensive landmarks in the game, the Red Palace. That would just tear those elephants to bits. And Beastie had to disengage. He's looking for villagers to kill, something to do, but... What is he going to do in this game with 25 villagers and a base that is right now wide open for further raiding? Yeah, at this point, Beastie is so all in. And the, this is the greatest counter to a potential all in because not only does it deny any units coming in from killing these three landmarks, it also creates a fourth landmark that you've now got to kill. And it's one of the hardest landmarks to kill in the game. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. When it comes to raw DPS, this landmark absolutely uh, hold on, uh, let me try and do it. Uh, it absolutely... I, I think... Did that work? I hope that worked. I'm not nope. sure if that worked. Nope, it, it, it didn't, didn't work. Ah, oh, damn. I was trying to bleep myself. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I guess... Uh, <laughs> It, it, this landmark is just such a smart move from Marine Lord. You just, you really got to appreciate just how good that is. I'm suspecting that that was a guild hold pullout that he did. Yeah, he likely did that. He had his guild hall on food. We talked about the food shortage that Marine Lord had. He had plenty of gold available, though. He pulls out the food from the guild hall, goes into Imperial with the Red Palace, and now he has the technology lead as well. And you know what else he's getting with Imperial Age? He's getting the ability to make cannons from his siege workshops, which means that it is going to be very easy for him to get rid of those castles. It's not like he's trapping them down. Trebuchets take so much time to deal with keeps that are being repaired, unlike bombards. Once you have two or three bombards out there, these forward keeps are going to get destroyed in a blink of an eye. Yeah, this is this is insane stuff that we are seeing out of Marine Lord right now. He's managed to find a way back into this game. Things were looking so well, or so good for Beastie uh, in those early stages of the game. But just a couple of raids really turns this game on its head. Yeah, the villager graph is going to tell you the whole story because this is where things started falling apart. And this is exactly how you have to play this matchup if you're the French. You have to constantly apply, apply pressure with those knights. Those are your high value units. Those are the backbone of your army. And you may not be able to take direct engagements, 
But if you cannot take direct engagements, you gotta raid, and that's exactly what Marine Lord did. Another key being dropped on the right side over here by Beastie is trying to pressure those gold mines, trying to find a way to climb back into this game. If he has the village fortresses upgrade finished on his keeps, he can use those keeps as town centers to replenish his villager count. But most of his keeps are also in sort of neutral territory or right in the enemy base. So it's gonna be interesting to see him produce villagers on those, that's for sure. Especially with only 225 food per minute, food income. Yeah, there's not a lot of food income for him, and he's still below 30 villagers as he loses a couple more on the stone mines. You know, typically when you're playing up against Delhi, the best way to do it is, is look for the berries and the deer on your map and then send your units there. But you can see Marine Lord's taking a different approach. He's just said, okay, where's the stone? And I'm just going to send my units there. And he's continued to hit these stone mines. And now Beastie continues to sit on 26 villagers while Marine Lord, I mean, it, his village account hasn't really moved either. He's sitting on 71. Yeah, but 71 is still more than 26, right? And of course, Beastie does have two sacred sites and four relics, so he's partially compensated for his lack of villagers, but still 26 is a little too low here. Beastie now moving up with the Spearman and the Scholars, though he's still trying to find an engagement and Marine Lord is just not giving him one. Marine Lord is aware that he can't take a direct engagement. Look at that cheeky castle on that gold mine. I mean, that's such a Beastie style of building out there. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, sorry, I think I've just muted my mic. I yes, don't know, Ludicor, you can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to rearrange. Uh, interesting to note that right now in, in Australia, we've got the coldest day on record. Uh, so right now, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to adjust all of my... Uh, <laughs> all of my rugs and everything, and I've accidentally just muted myself down on the floor, so I apologize. <laughs> I'll, I'll fix it up, though. Don't worry, I will fix it up. But uh, I'm, I'm good, though. I'm good now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about, you know, where this game is going, because at, at this point in time, Marine Lord has stabilized. He started to make villages again. He started to get out a, a, a pretty decent amount of bombards, but the big thing to note is he doesn't have enough bombards to one-shot an elephant. And... Over on the other side, Beastie, he's got a lot of scholars. And he spots out those Bombards. And he could be running in right now. Indeed he is. Bombard's going to be focusing down those scholars. The first two do make it down. Bombard's going to be trying their best to get out of there, wheeling their way out. Looks like the Knight's going to be turning around, doing a great job of just forcing those spears into a difficult position. But Beastie knows that his enemy is in a potentially bad spot right now. And Marine Lord has to fall back. He's got three cannons that are out, wheeling themselves back towards the Red Palace. Ladies and gentlemen, get your brutes out because it is time. And they absolutely just decimate any of those units underneath. He wheels his way all the way back in and now fires off from the safety of that Red Palace. A trail of corpses just signal the firepower that's coming out of the Red Palace. And this is all that Beastie can accomplish. I like what he's doing right now. He's trying to drag this game out, trying to find himself uh, a way to get back in this one. He simply can't break that defense with the Red Palace. There is no tools for him that allow him to do that. He's still trying to just corner Marine Lord as much as possible, try to buy himself some time. Still though, 33 villagers only. He needs to find a way to get back villager count wise. He's got a ton of stone in the bank. If he dropped one or two keeps back at home and then used them as town centers, it would be a completely different story, right? Yeah, that would be exactly it because obviously with village fortresses, basically the, these these keeps act as town centers, which may, makes it so that you've gone from one town center to four town centers, five town centers, depending on how many keeps you've got. But with Marine Lord being up in, in that Imperial Age, it's just going to make the Bombard so easily capable of dealing with this. And now we see Marine Lord slowly but steadily stabilizing and placing a very aggressive keep up towards the north. Yeah, Marine Lord, obviously, if he's given a bit of a room to stabilize, he's going to unleash the wrath of that 82 villagers he has. Plus, let's not forget that while his food income isn't spectacular from farms, his guild hall is still set on food. On the other hand, because that guild hall is set on food, he's finding himself in a different spot. Look at the gold that Marine Lord has and look at the gold income. Not a single bit of gold available right now for Marine Lord. That castle on the right side that Beast is snuck up on him is actually denying a tremendous amount of gold here. Looked like a cheeky castle by Beastie, and it's gonna get taken down by the Bombard soon, but it actually did a lot more damage than what we anticipated. Yeah, Marine Lord's still managing to keep his economy afloat, though. 84 villagers for him, Beastie on 37. I guess one of the things to note, and uh, maybe I'm coping right now, that Beastie's got five relics. He's also got the two sacred sites secured. So he's sitting on 800 passive gold, which has got to account for something. I don't know if it's going to account for 50 villagers, though. So, yeah, maybe that's something to consider. 
Yeah, that's indeed a ton of gold to work with. Now the elephant's moving towards that keep over here. I wonder if it has boiling oil. It's gonna have a bombard emplacement finish soon and no boiling oil. That's going to make life a lot easier and a lot happier for those spears. Still, looks like the bombard emplacement is going to be sufficient enough to discourage Beastie from further aggression. Yeah, huge area effect on that bombard emplacement as well. Not a lot of people realize that that, that y your typical bombard cannon doesn't do AoE damage. Uh, but the, the emplacement, though, does a huge amount of AoE damage. So you do have to be careful as an elephant goes down up in the north. Indeed, and those elephants are extremely valuable right now for Beastie. You see, he's down to two elephants, only 22 spearmen. The good news is that he's making the game very messy. Oh, he lost the keep, right? He had to lose oh, it. Oh, that's... Yeah. That's painful. That's really painful. I, I wish there was a way for us to tell, like a, a minus 800. Wouldn't that be cool if it came up minus 800 stone? Like, that, that would be great. Yeah, like... Um... Oh, it would be minus 600 because he's got the... Uh... Yep. He's, he's got the uh, the compound of the defender. Looks like he's going to retry once more, but that cannon is still shelling that keep out there. So it's going to be a short-lived keep once again for Beastie. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's going up, but it's at least going to delay the gold income for a brief moment. He's going to try to snipe that bombard, though. Yeah, a curious decision from him here uh, to, to really go for this second keep. Obviously, he's got the potential for military units to come in and sneak underneath, but now that keep going to be firing down upon the units below it. Villagers here ready to repair up this cannon in the event. Things go Ori, and indeed they seem to be going Ori right now as those villagers actually going to get sniped out. Beastie trying to turn his spears upon them. But that keep, look, look how much health is on that cannon. There's just, there's no way that thing is going down. Yeah, it's not going down. The castle is sufficient enough to deal with all the spearmen out there. Beast is still at 66 population. He's pushing Marine Lord away from the gold. That's the good news. But Marine Lord now secures himself another gold mine, I do believe. So he should still be good to go. Now, look at that. Marine Lord is adding a new town center. He's realizing that he needs to catch up a little faster. He can't afford to just sit back for 20 minutes and hope that Beast is still on 40 villagers. In fact, if you would ask Marine Lord right now what he thinks Beast's villager count is, he would probably say something like 70. So he probably doesn't yeah, know yeah. that Beastie's at 40 only. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the hard things about watching this as a spectator because you get to see all this information. You get to have that that omni... What is it? Omni, omnipotence? Om, omnipresence? You're able to see everything, hear everything, and, and witness it all in real time. Whereas these players are just dealing with suspicions. You know, Beastie's thinking, eh, I'm not that far behind. And meanwhile, we know the truth. Whereas Marine Lord's thinking, oh, I'm, I'm kind of, I need to get ahead right now. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not ahead enough. Whereas, obviously, we see him being very far ahead. Yeah, and if, if you think about Marine Lord's perspective and, you know, him thinking that his opponent's at 70, 80 villagers, suddenly you understand the need for that next town center because he needs to stabilize a lot faster than what he is doing right now. If he doesn't do that, he could find himself overrun by the Delhi over here. And it looks like Beast is just going to tap out over here. He's realizing that this game is too far gone. He tried for so, so long, but ultimately, Marine Lord secures the win over here. The villager graph is going to tell you the whole story. Beastie going down to 25 villagers at 25 minutes game time. Yeah, that is absolutely wild stuff there. Uh, uh, it, it, it's just such a difficult position for him to come back from. That, that raid really knocked him out of the game because that, that changed the whole tempo of the game and forced him to go all in. And as soon as Marine Lord recognized that, he just drops down that Imperial uh, landmark and then just closes out the game. Once that landmark came down, there was almost no way the Beastie was coming back into the game. Obviously, we identified. We said, okay, Beastie has the potential here. He can drop keeps down and then look to push and kill those landmarks with elephants. And then that, that Red Palace comes down and everything just goes out the window. And credit to the reaction of Marine Lord here, because we do have to keep in mind that obviously we see what's going on all across the map, but Marine Lord didn't. But Marine Lord still diagnosed it really well that, okay, I just killed 25 villagers, so the only chance my opponent has really right now is to just go all in on my landmarks and I'll have to drop the Red Palace as soon as possible, make sure that I stall this out, and then I will win. 